Champion. The mayor pro tem was elected to the Murphy City Council in 2016 and re-elected in May of 2019. She previously served on the Murphy Community Development Corporation and the Planning and Zoning Commission. Ms. Birkin is a member of the Murphy Community Emergency Response Team, which is a natural extension of her skills gained from her degree in geography and disaster management. She also currently serves as one of our Chamber of Commerce Ambassadors. In her professional life, Ms. Birkin is a GIS and digital technology consultant for an international environmental engineering firm. In her spare time, she actively pursues learning self-defense techniques using Krav Maga. She and her husband, Ryan, live with their two dogs in the Timbers neighborhood. Tell us all about the city, Jennifer. Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, I'm going to share my screen to show you a little bit about what's going on here. All right, folks, let's just jump right into it. I'm not going to avoid the, the elephant in the room here. Uh, we have had a wild year at the city. This is unprecedented times and uh, COVID-19 really has, has done a number on, well, our nation at large. Um, I will say that all the things that our, our staff has done to uh, respond to COVID-19 has really been an admirable job, uh, admirable job. They have been able to transition to working from home, which is sometimes the first time that many of them have done that. Uh, some of them have still had to show up day to day to be able to be on call for our city services. And we can't uh, say how much we appreciate them, although I will continue to say it over and over. I would love to be able to update you with the most current numbers of what we're experiencing here in the city. But uh, truth be told, things are a little bit crazy in the numbers reporting game. Uh, Chief Albright has been fabulous at trying to keep track of our internal numbers of what we're seeing as our firefighters go out and respond, uh, our paramedics, our EMTs, as they respond to, to possible COVID cases around town. Uh, I am showing you right now the COVID-19 uh, COVID dashboard from Collin County, which admittedly has a huge disclaimer right at the top of, of this as you pull it up every day because no longer is the county uh, reporting these numbers. This is all coming from the department, uh, I'm sorry, the Department of State Health Services. So this is coming from the state, which uh, there are different ways that they are scrubbing and trying to understand the numbers. Uh, and so you'll see these, these items here in uh, kind of boxed out in green are most relevant to the city of Murphy. The deceased number, I will caution you, and the hospitalized numbers, those refer to all of Collin County at this point. Uh, that is not Murphy specific. We unfortunately have had a few deaths of residents uh, due to COVID-19. Um, it, it, it's tragic. I'm, I'm, I was heartbroken when we heard about the, the first and every one since. Uh, right now, even though the dashboard is showing that we have approximately 13 active cases in our city, I did get a, a quick estimate from uh, Chief Albright, and he did say that his internal kind of estimates is that we're actually probably more uh, more around 23 at this point in time. Regardless, we have actually had very fairly good, uh, healthy response to this pandemic, and so I would encourage everybody on this call, not just to encourage you, but all your businesses, all of your employees, and all of your friends and family, stick with those three principles: washing your hands and sanitizing surfaces wearing a face mask when you're out in public and keeping social distancing in mind whenever possible. So with that, we are in this pandemic for the long haul. I don't suspect that it is uh, going to be quitting anytime soon. And of course we are about to go into flu season. So these are pretty good practices just for flu season in general, Wear, washing your hands, uh, keeping distance if you can. But at the same time, uh, just be cognizant of these things. We're, we're gonna try to continue to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic as much as we can. Um, you'll see that our city has actually passed a, a disaster, of, a declaration of disaster, and that has basically passed through all of the governor's orders. So at this time, we're still just passing through everything that has been uh, put on us by the state, which I think is still very appropriate at this time. We're still trying to make sure that we uh, limit all of our kind of outdoor activities or just indoor activities to, to small groups. So if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me, drop a line, a line to the mayor uh, and, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. 
onto the more dry stuff, this, the uh, dry part of the city updates here, so bear with me. Uh, the city budget, we are actually going to adopt the tax rate in the budget tonight at our council meeting. So I do encourage you, it is a rather long docket tonight, but I encourage you, if you <coughs> feel free to call into the city and we'll make sure to, to kind of give you all the nitty gritty details about what's going on. I hope to give you a little bit of preview here as well. In terms of our property tax rate, we are going to be holding that steady at 49 and a half cents per $100 valuation. You're gonna see some information here uh, in a few slides where I talk, talk about that a little bit more, but that is an important number and it is important to note that we are not changing the tax rate. That is not our intention. And we have budgeted as though we are not changing the tax rate. In terms of our general fund and our utility fund, uh, both of those saw increases in our budget of about 3% over the past year, which just basically is indicating that our city continues to grow a little bit slower than it used to, but we still have some room for growth. And so we'll still be collecting additional uh, revenue and of course, having some additional expenditures. Speaking of the uh, pie charts of the day, uh, come to us in the form of our revenue and our expenditures. So we're sitting at about 54% of our revenue is actually gained by collecting our property taxes, both residential and commercial. So this is a little bit different from other cities that you may, may be involved with because of that majority of our revenue coming from property taxes is just a little bit different. We don't have as substantial of a commercial area as some other cities do. We are primarily residential. So that's why we rely so heavily on, on uh, property taxes as a revenue instead of sales tax. Although we have a pretty healthy chunk uh, coming in with our 2% sales tax as well. In terms of our expenditures, 64% uh, of that goes towards personnel. And that's really just to make sure we still have the best and the brightest around. Uh, we have some amazing staff members and they have all uh, continued to exceed expectations, try to become bigger and better at their jobs, making sure that they're getting additional training. And I I've really been impressed with the way that ever since I've been elected on council, I've really noticed uh, a number of the departments have just really done outstanding jobs trying to kind of not only navigate kind of their, their departments, but also things like responding here to COVID, uh, making sure that they have tightened their own belts while still making sure that we are providing the level of service that our residents expect and really require. Now, if, uh, if you're clever enough to do the math, which I am not a math person, but those numbers uh, look a little upside down. And that is true. We actually have a budget shortfall in this upcoming year of $437,000. So we're actually gonna be taking that from our reserve, which is pretty healthy at this point. I think we've got a reserve of about $6.2 million. So we have chosen at this point to not raise our property tax and instead cover that budget shortfall through our reserve. Uh, and that way we'll hopefully lessen the burden on the taxpayers. A couple of quick notes on our utility side, uh, the utility fund back in uh, 2018, we actually issued $5.5 million of certificates of obligation. Um, that was to support a number of different projects. I think we've got about seven projects listed there. Uh, I will say three of those have been completed. And I say three with a uh, hope that the first one, which is the North Murphy Road eight inch water line, I think that one is technically completed, if not at least in punch list mode. Uh, but the rest of them are all in progress as well. So we're very excited to be able to wrap up those projects here by the end of this next fiscal year. The other big news here on this slide is that we plan no increases in water and sewer charges for this upcoming year. So as of October 1st, when our water and sewer rates always take place, uh, that's, that's always the change in the rates, our residents won't see a single change to their bills. It's going to continue on with the same rates. Now I say that knowing that every single year, I want you to be aware that city council does undergo a review of these rate increases and we look out about five years ahead. It's always a little bit of a game because you don't know what to expect in, in the out years, but we do try to keep in contact with North Texas Municipal Water District uh, because they manage and maintain our water and sewer supplies. Uh, and so we do have a couple of things looking out ahead 
where we know that they're going to be planning some capital improvements on one of the wastewater treatment plants that we feed into. So that probably is going to be impacting our cost here coming up in the next couple of years. But like I said, we review those rates on an annual basis at this point. Um, I think we typically used to do it every other year. We've gone to every year just to make, make sure that anytime we are thinking about a potential increase or any kind of change to the rate structure, we try to minimize the impact to our residents because even a few cents can make quite a big difference if, you're, if you have some large bills. So earlier, uh, Julie mentioned that Collin County has a couple of programs. One of the things that we have received here at the city is a portion of the CARES Act fund. So if you were uh, lucky enough to be a city that's over 500,000 uh, in population, you basically got the money from the feds right away. We had to wait for Collin County to uh, portion that out. So our portion of the funds for, from Collin County is $914,000. You can see here on my screen that uh, staff already basically figured out how to spend it, <laughs> which is fantastic because most of the things that they're looking at spending this, these funds on are going to increase our safety of both not just our employees, but also our residents. So there are a lot of upgrades uh, around the city that are planned. Some of them are already starting to, to go into place. Uh, we wanna make sure that things are held touchless from this point forward. And again, we're thinking long-term here. This is not just a knee-jerk response to COVID-19. This is the realization that pandemics do affect us. They're, it's not something that uh, is not out of the realm of possibility for the future. So we wanna make sure that we are um, very much looking ahead and making sure that we've got our staff prepared uh, as well as our, our facilities. Julie also mentioned, uh, so I do wanna give a quick plug to the ConCare Small Business Grant Program. As she mentioned, the uh, application process right now for your businesses are, is open for another 10 days. So September 25th. If your business meets all of the el eligibility requirements, I do highly encourage you to apply. Um, if you have any kind of expenses from March through August that deal with payroll and utilities, and especially if you've done anything in your business to help support the concept of being safe here in COVID-19 times, highly encourage you to apply for this grant. You could, your business could receive up to $25,000. So make sure you go to the Collin County website for more information there. I want to circle back to a couple things on the tax rate. So again, I mentioned our tax rate is staying steady this year. Uh, I just threw out this historic tax rate graph because this is something that the mayor and I love to, to kind of watch and see how this trend has, has gone over the past number of years. Uh, you can see we were riding pretty high there in the early uh, 2010s, but we have made some significant changes in the city accounting practices that primarily is due to us onboarding our amazing city manager, Dr. Castro, as well as his, I, I don't know a better word than amazing, <laughs> team of financial advisors. So uh, Karen Montgomery and her team have just been outstanding at uncovering a lot of uh, potential waste in the city, making sure that we are reporting things correctly. She has really done a fantastic job working with, um, with Ernie Chambers, our controller, and getting everything set for our annual audits. And we have had absolutely glowing reports for the past number of years because of their dedication to this. And that really reflects all the way down through the chain. Every department is responsible for making sure that we can really manage our money wisely. And that's really a testament to how we can keep this tax rate fairly low and steady at this point. In case you're wondering where we are in relation to our neighboring cities, I also put this together and took a look at what our neighboring cities did, not just this year, but also last year. So some of these are proposed. Some of many of these have been adopted already this year, uh, but I did grab this information and found that most of the cities around us also are keeping their tax rate steady. They're recognizing that we have a lot of challenges for our residents this year, and we don't want to place any additional burden. So a lot of us have been tightening our belts and making sure that we have tried to Again, not cut city services, still have that exemplary customer service that we always have, but be able to work within our region. Um, I will say, way to go Wiley. I will give them a little bit of a shout out because 
finally, <laughs> they have been able to drop their tax rate by about one and a half cents, which I think has uh, been a long time coming. In terms of our sales tax revenue, I found this pretty interesting. This is something I've become more and more interested in uh, as we do our financial updates every month at the city. Um, so what you see there in this, sorry, Ernie, I kind of, uh, I took your numbers and I made it into the world's most ugly line graph. <laughs> but our 2020 year here in that thick kind of green line is really showing that we have experienced a higher sales tax revenue than ever before. And in certain places, you're seeing it really wildly different. So I will say, for one thing, our sales tax revenue is reported uh, kind of two months behind the times. So what you're seeing there, uh, that general spike in February, that's actually related to sales tax that is collected in December. So it's reported in February. So that's kind of how this, this graph looks. Um, you can see here that starting in June, as we in 2020 started to really, uh, really, really see the increase in our sales tax revenue. Again, think back two months, that started to be our April, our May, our June, our July, and a lot of online sales have started happening there when we've been really severely locked down from COVID. Um, we, I, I don't know what the numbers look like uh, for tonight if Arnie gives those to us, but I am expecting that, um, that we'll probably see at least the same amount here reported for September, which we'll be reporting for the July numbers. Uh, but it, it's been pretty fascinating. Uh, Ernie did also a great analysis of how much of our sales tax sales tax comes from uh, online versus storefront. So just to give you a quick little, um, some quick analysis here. In, in fiscal year 19, so last year, we actually only had kind of a partial year for this analysis. So we only have uh, January through September to, to report on. But in, in that time frame, 3% of our sales tax was coming from online sales and 97% was storefront. Here in 2020, where we've had this full year of analysis, minus this, this last month of September, 8% of our sales tax is coming from online sales and 92% storefront but I don't want you to think that our storefronts aren't doing as well. Um, we have still seen an increase of 4% of our sales tax revenue over last year. Uh, we've had a number of new businesses open up as well, which has really been a fantastic way to, to increase our services around town. I'm gonna to be interested though to see, keep seeing these uh, online sales numbers because just our small analysis from last year to this year, our online sales increased from to, <laughs> by 173%, which sounds like a crazy number and it probably is and it's probably not going to be reflective of any kind of trend necessarily. I don't think any of us can really uh, understand or expect what to what we should be seeing here in the next couple of years. Turning now over to bond projects. So back in uh, 2017, we took some bond propositions to the voters and uh, I think you probably have heard us talk about this for the last couple of years in the state of the city update but we did have three different propositions that were passed by the voters. And so this is just a quick understanding of where we've spent the money versus what the total budget for those particular propositions is. Um, right now, we've basically uh, kind of expended 42% of our overall funds and we have pretty much all of our projects in progress, which is awesome. Speaking of the completed projects, I am so excited to announce our Waters Edge Park finally has opened uh, as of August. We had a great groundbreaking ceremony uh, a year ago, and now a year later, we had the actual ribbon cutting as well. I will tell you, if you haven't seen your council members play on playground equipment, there is video evidence out there, and I would highly encourage you to go laugh at us because we tested out every single bit of, <laughs> of that equipment, made sure it was safe for the kids. Um, if you do have kids of your, of your own, grandkids, steal your next door neighbor's baby, I don't know, uh, go check out this park. It is our first major inclusive park. We've done some upgrades to some of the other parks to have some inclusive playground equipment. This one really truly is targeted um, to uh, allow kids of all ages and any kind of uh, uh, disabilities to be able to, to play. We have some awesome swings. I will say that's very, very fun. Uh, those slides are wicked fast. 
without being too scary. Um, and there's just some really cool tactile things that kids can play with throughout the playground. A uh, little bit less sexy of projects, we've got our street panel replacement, which has, uh, it's actually in punch list uh, phase right now, so it should be wrapped up here by the end of the month, but I figured I could include it here on the completed projects. That's what you're seeing up on the top left part of your screen. Uh, that was primarily focused on our Skyline Acres and Travis Farms uh, area. So Horizon, Sunset, Skyline Roads, uh, all kind of got some, some major updates to their concrete pavement. That is an area of town where we have a lot of drainage problems because that is not a curb and gutter area, which we're used to seeing in a lot of our neighborhoods. This really is an open ditch uh, kind of area. And we wanted to still allow the residents to have that feel because they specifically asked for it. But they did need some much, uh, <laughs> they, need, they did need some upgrades to their roads. And then finally, the landscape and irrigation on a number of our roads, Heritage, Betsy, North Murphy Road and McCreary Road, those all also, I believe, are under punch list uh, time. And so we're just trying to wrap those up as well if they're not completed already. Um, those primarily were focused on changing some of the uh, medians over so that they are irrigated better, uh, where sometimes we didn't have irrigation set up already. We also have made sure that we've changed over to more drought tolerant plants and also some lower visibility plants. If I'm saying that correctly, we tried to stay away from putting trees right there next to each of those intersections so that hopefully folks can see a little bit better around the corners. I will say one thing that I left off here that I just remembered this morning is that we have our brand new marquee sign in front of the community center. I don't have a great picture of it, but it looks amazing. So I highly encourage you next time you drive past the community center, go take a look and uh, it's got um, great information showing on the screen, uh, but as well, it's just, I think, pretty beautiful to look at. We've got now 10 of our projects that have been completed under the bond uh, projects. 10 more, the, re the remaining of them, are all under varying stages of construction. And that's really the bulk of where the money is going to be uh, valued at, $12.8 million worth of projects under construction. So just to touch on a couple of them, here on the, the top part of your screen, you're going to see that uh, very lovely picture of a ditch. <laughs> that is part of the, drip, the Timbers drainage project. There are three different drainage channels uh, within the Timbers that badly need some updates. We need to clear out brush. We need to expand some of the areas where we have the concrete swale. Um, and we have done just a lot of uh, kind of reclaiming of that, uh, of that right of way. I'm sorry, of that easement. We've got work undergoing right now on North Maxwell Creek Road. That's again, one of those places where we don't have curb and gutter. We just have a drainage, uh, drainage ditches along an asphalt road. And that asphalt road is getting a much needed upgrade to concrete. It'll be much easier to repair and replace that in future years. And that concrete will, will hold out a hell of a lot longer than the asphalt. So we're very excited. Most of you, uh, if you, if you ever take that little back way to City Hall or to PSA, you've noticed that that has been closed down for about a month, and that's because we're undergoing that, that update right now. One of my favorite things about that particular project is that we are also making sure to finish our trail pathway that goes across the railroad. So we do have a dark railroad track uh, running right through that. We're going to be fixing the road through it as well as completing the trail so that pedestrians and bicyclists can actually uh, not have to be in the road anymore, which is a fantastic update. Uh, South Maxwell Creek and Kinney Roads, that's primarily going to be a drainage improvement uh, project. Uh, and I believe we are also repaving the asphalt roads there. Our city facilities are undergoing a bunch of renovations as well. Uh, the police department has renovations uh, primarily in the locker rooms. Uh, we're kind of revamping that. We're also removing the jail area. We no longer really ever use it. Mainly, um, and uh, Chief Cotton can correct me if I'm wrong, but we primarily will either uh, take anybody over uh, and hold them at Wiley, I believe, uh, if that's still available to us, or we take them up to Holland County itself. So we really don't have the need to hold anybody long-term in the jail. So we're going to be revamping that to, to make better use of that area. 
Public Works is getting a new storage facility. It's going to be rather large. It's going to be able to hold a lot of equipment and it's something that they desperately needed since we really grew up as a city. Uh, we've been able to secure more and more amazing equipment for them uh, and they just need good places to store it. And finally, the MAC renovation here uh, for city facilities, you can see uh, most of you remember, we have actually used the MAC quite a bit for, um, for our chamber meetings, uh, especially our Thursday morning business card exchanges. And we are very much looking forward to hopefully in the future, getting you all back in there. Uh, the MAC has undergone quite a significant renovation because no longer is it going to be one large room. Uh, it's actually broken up into a number of smaller rooms that will still hold large groups. So we hope to be able to have more people utilize the MAC in the future uh, at any given time. They'll also probably have some AV uh, equipment and hookups and things like that that will be a little bit easier for groups to use as well. For Bunny Run and Lonesome Dove, those are two different areas. Uh, Bunny Run is down here just outside of the Timbers and Lonesome Dove is up in the Ranch and Gables area. Um, both of those are going to be undergoing some culvert updates. So that's, again, some drainage improvements. And then finally, North Hill Park and Travis Farm Park. Again, two wildly different areas of town that I just kind of lumped together because they're pretty similar. North Hill Park is up in the Ranch and Gables. Uh, that's going to get an additional, we, we kind of were looking at, there's about four and a half acres of open space there. So we were looking at what to do with it. Do we need to regrade it? Do we need to add additional paths? Um, we are adding a tennis court, which is going to be awesome. And we're adding an exercise station on top of some like rubberized pavement. So it's going to be pretty cool to be able to kind of go around that, that entire area and be able to get your workout in as well. For Travis Farm Park, there's uh, five and a half acres of open space. We're going to leave a lot of that very natural as residents requested, but we are increasing the trail options because we'd like to make more of a connection to not just Travis Farm uh, Estates, but also Bluff Creek Estates, which is on the east side of that park. So uh, we're going to make sure that more residents are able to enjoy that, uh, especially the ones that live nearby. But of course, that will be open to anybody in the city. Speaking of things that people can do here in the city, our recreation department is outstanding. Um, they have been able to really kind of pivot here. As of March 15th, everything in the city kind of went virtual. And so a number of our classes, we've, we've worked with them and we've been able to help a number of them go virtual uh, and then start returning now in person. So it's, it's really of all ages, we've got some uh, targeted much, much younger groups, as well as some of the, um, as well as jazz or science and uh, yoga classes have resumed. We've also got a number of other activities returning this fall. And you can see how stinking cute they are <laughs> with their masks on and still being able to, to do their activities here in the gym. So we've really tried to make sure that we've implemented things um, like temperature checks and masks and additional sanitation practices, just to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe who comes in. We'll also give, uh, I, I stole this just yesterday, actually. Uh, we just put this out on social media, our open gym policy. So if you have any questions about using the gym at any point, please do feel free to give our rec staff a call. Um, they'll be able to walk you through any kind of uh, reservations you might need and talk to you about how many people can come in at any given time. In terms of community events, again, this is uh, hand in hand with our recreation department. Our community events, which we absolutely love, really got thrown a curveball on March 15th. We had to end up canceling a number of those. So that affected our Teens Tales Nails, which we usually hold at the end of April uh, and beginning of May. We had to cancel all of our Moonlight movies, our Sound at Sundown, and yes, very, very sadly, our upcoming May's Days. But uh, again, our community event staff just did a phenomenal job trying to think of other ways that we could help support our residents and kind of give everybody something fun to do here during this time. So very, very quickly, they spun up this concept of a senior car parade to celebrate our seniors from Plano East and Wild High Schools. So we held that on uh, Saturday, June 6th. And you can see that they had a blast tricking out their cars and trucks and writing down our little parade route. Uh, we had 46 cars that participated, 
and they went from Kimbrough up to Betsy Road and then from McCreary over to Heritage and then back to Kimbrough. And it was a, a really sweet little parade and uh, I think everybody really enjoyed it. I can't promise you that this is going to be an ongoing kind of occurrence, but it's some, certainly something that we uh, suggested that staff looks into. And I think the, the mayor was very, very pleased that his own uh, senior high daughter could, <laughs> could take part in this. Our community event staff has also uh, successfully done our first drive-in movie theater in Kimbrough Stadium. So this was able to take place primarily because school was out and uh, this was summer. So we, <laughs> we showed Frozen 2 and it was a huge hit. We had 103 cars uh, come to this event and that allowed us to, as you can see on the, on, in the picture, really space out the cars uh, as well as making sure that everybody could see the screen. So I think this was just a brilliant idea. I can't wait for more events like this because I thought that was just a, a really clever use of, of Kimbrough Stadium, the, the concept of a screen and allow everybody to kind of get a taste of being out and about. I think by the that end of June, many of us were already kind of going crazy. So it was really nice to have that, uh, that event available to us. Maze Days. We did do a Maze Days t-shirt design contest with the hopes that we would have Maze Days. So we did, I just want to give some props to the three adorable submissions. Uh, we did have our winner there in the top left hand corner. It was Maze Days with the wheelbarrow and the corn. Uh, but super cute. We were so, so pleased that people uh, were interested in designing these. But again, and it absolutely kills me to say this every time, Maze Days has been canceled. We had a really good and thoughtful discussion on council a couple of weeks ago and really tried to, to think of different ways to, to go about this. But at the end, we just didn't feel that we could put staff into that kind of a situation where they would potentially be exposed to so many people. Um, and while we had a number of, you know, ways in place to, to be able to kind of manage the crowds, we really just felt that we probably couldn't put on the same kind and caliber of event that our residents are used to. So we'd rather delay this, uh, make a bigger and better celebration for next year when we return. So knock on wood. For the rest of this calendar year, we are going to actually be discussing our events here uh, tonight in our upcoming council meeting. So if you're interested, do tune in uh, and I'll try to also give folks updates on social media about what we decide here. So that's primarily going to be focused on fall queen and bean, Arbor Day, Christmas in the park, I believe. But I did see on our on our uh, on our agenda packet that there may be some some new items in there. So possibly a jazzercise in the park event and a drive-through trunk or treat activity for our kids along Halloween. So very clever ideas. I really hope that we can come to a, a good understanding of how those events can take place. I think because they're smaller and they're probably a lot more easy uh, to kind of manage. We may have some good successes here for some small community events this, this fall. So all hope is not lost. We're still here, but we're still active and certainly our community event staff is still done to help and, uh, and put on some amazing events. So I do just also want to give a shout out to some community events that have been occurring that aren't necessarily city sponsored, uh, but Country Burger this past weekend had an amazing car show. Uh, you can see there the drone image that I, I snagged from their Facebook page the other day because wow, what a turnout. You can definitely tell that folks were ready to be able to be out and about and see each other. Uh, probably a little less social distancing than I would like, but still what an amazing turnout. And you can see that the, the spirit of this community is still very strong. We do have Walmart also offering to do a couple of drive-in movie nights. So those are coming up next month, October 20th and 21st. You are going to have to get tickets. And as you can see up there, the tickets are going fast. So if you've got any interest in, in attending those, um, don't think that I've heard what the movies are going to be, but regardless, it should be a fun night. And I have heard that there may be uh, some swag and some bags for, for attendees. So you don't want to miss that. Another activity here going on in the city, big, big uh, promotion here, because as you heard Carolyn mention, 
I've actually been a member of a number of our boards and commissions before I ever thought about joining council. Uh, and so we highly encourage you to, to think about if you've got a little bit of spare time, uh, our boards and commissions is a great way to give back to the city. Uh, this is completely volunteer positions, really does not take up too much of your time. Some of our boards do meet monthly, at least once a month. Um, others meet a little less frequently. So I would highly encourage you if you have any questions or comments, we will be holding an open house. Um, I did kind of revamp our graphic. I stole one from last year, uh, but we are going virtual this year. So last year we had the great idea from uh, council, council member Liz Abraham of holding an open house just to be able to get folks involved and, and understand what the boards and commissions are a little bit more. And so this year we're gonna do the same thing, holding it virtually. So Susie and our IT director are, are really uh, kind of coming up with some clever ideas of how we can host that. And so I, I would really strongly encourage you or anybody you know that might want to volunteer and give back to the city to come to, the, to, come to that event. And then again, if you would like to fill out an application, uh, it's a very, very easy application, no real stress. You will also have a five or 10 minute conversation with a couple of council members who are our uh, boards and commissions committee. And so they'll kind of pick and choose and figure out where the best placement for you on a particular board is. So that application is available on our website. You can go right there, fill it out on the web form, submit it and be done. So uh, we'll certainly be in contact with you. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our city secretary as well. Now, coming to a Chamber of Commerce meeting, I would be uh, silly, it would be silly of me not to mention a number of our new businesses. So I did grab everyone that I could find a logo for. Wanted to say big props to all of the new restaurants that are spinning up. You all have being a couple of pounds here for, from COVID-19, I would like to pass off, but nope, it's in fact uh, just eating a whole lot of donuts, a whole lot of brunch <laughs> and a whole lot of Indian food. Um, but that's, that's fantastic. I am so pleased that you all have, have been able to join us here in the city. Um, also, I will say that to work off those pounds, we've got Pure Bar now across the road for me as well. Uh, and if you are at all athletic or skilled, or even if you're not, go check out Ninja Nation. They just opened up this past week or uh, two weeks ago or so, and they have just had a fabulous, uh, fabulous little spot there right next to the old Albertsons. They kind of carve it off a portion of that, and it's just really a, a terrific facility. We're excited about some of the upcoming items coming up soon. Uh, service first, if you've noticed on 544 on the south side here, uh, right before you get to CBS, that building is pretty much completed, and I believe we started to issue the certificate of occupancy. So I would expect to hear that they're going to have a grand opening soon, uh, if they haven't had one already, and I missed it. But looking forward to them and a number of other folks uh, Assured Self Storage, uh, the Indopack Supermarket, uh, Best Gymnastics, those are all in, currently in progress uh, in construction. And so finally, I just wanted to recap kind of some, some amazing things about the Mercury Unites program. Again, I cannot say enough about this idea that came from the chamber here uh, back in March or April, where I started talking with city staff. And my goodness, this program has just blossomed. I can't thank Jared Mayfield and Bailey Ragsdale enough for all of their hard work, plus everybody else at the city that they've worked with, as well as you all here on the chamber. So we have this absolutely brilliant logo and everything that I try to post on social media, I try to post Murky Nights, hashtag Murky Nights. Some of the cool things that they've been doing here is they have launched the website and our social media pages. So again, go look on Facebook for Murky Nights. We've got a number of Discover Murphy videos. Uh, I'm the star of one. We've had uh, Janae Butler do a little behind the scenes at Two Crazy Bakers, which was super, super cool. Uh, and we've got a whole whole host of other things that are coming up as well. We've got some cool uh, banners on South Murphy Road that you can see. We've got sidewalk decals that I still haven't found all of them. I think there's, Bailey can correct us, uh, there's either like seven or 10 of them around town. Only found a couple of them. Uh, we've also got window cling for your businesses. So if you don't have a window cling to, to put in your business, please do contact the Murphy Nights team uh, and we'll make sure to get you one. And then finally, uh, big props for 
the new dining and retail guides. These are little trifold uh, brochures that we put together that really kind of give an amazing view of our entire commercial area that uh, shows us exactly what is going on here in the city of Murphy that we get to do when we think about shopping local, staying local, and making sure that we are um, essentially supporting the city by those tax uh, sales tax dollars. So all those sales tax dollars go to everything that we do, beautification projects, uh, road improvements. There's just so many things that that is crucial for us to be able to maintain the, the level of services here in the city. And so anything that we can do to encourage folks to still to use our businesses as much as possible, we are doing our best to do so. All right, folks, uh, that pretty much wraps up our state of the city for right now. But if you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them. Um, and if, I, if you don't get time to ask me today or you don't think about it today, I'm pretty sure all of you know where you can find me. Uh, my email address, well, it does include my last name and it is impossible to spell unless you're Susie Quinn. Uh, I would highly recommend you go to the city page and you can always find me there. So thank you.